of isolation now, and uh, or lockdown, as as we as we're calling it, isn't it? Um, so I, I'm, I've got to make a new rudder for Andromeda, and I've had some wood delivered. Luckily, the Friday before we were locked down, uh, a lorry turned up to deliver a load of Iroka. Um, as you can see, there's definitely enough wood to make the rudder out of. So there's a lot of things I need to do to this wood because I bought it pretty much as cheap as I could get it. So I've got to strain it out, I've got to plane it, I've got to join it, all, all of these kinds of things. I just thought it'd be a bit of fun to make a video really, just to kind of talk you through what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. I know there's more than one way to do things and uh, it may be the right way or the wrong way, but I'm going to sort of figure it out as I go. I've got a bit of a rough idea in my head about what it is I'd like to do and how I'd like to do it. So just sort of make a little video really just to kind of talk you through what I'm doing. Um, I guess probably firstly, welcome to the garage. This is a workbench that I built based on Dad's one, which is a great workbench he's got in his workshop, isn't it? Um, so same sort of design really, um, except I've put a backboard up here, just made out of some chipboard that you get in in lofts, that kind of thing, it's chipboard flooring. So I've just put a backboard there, the bench here, most of the tools, hand tools I use are up here and there's other storage un underneath. Um, pretty much this is everything I need really. Um, I've borrowed a few bits and pieces off Dad, um, but in the most part this is kind of enough to, to get started with stuff. Just having to sort through this wood, um, trying to find a bit that's got a straight edge to it and it's proving really difficult. Some of them are very bent or twisted, which is really frustrating. Based on the garage floor being straight, um, which I believe it is, I've found one board where the edge is pretty much straight. So that's gonna be my straight edge and I'm gonna clamp it down to these one at a time and use it as a guide to guide my circular saw um, so that I can cut those edges straight. to jig this up okay so that it's a guide now as you've probably just seen from the time lap time lapse I've measured the distance from the edge of my saw to the blade which is four centimeters I've measured that distance out here this is the line I want to cut okay so that should cut a nice straight line along there it's a lot of faff to do this for every single edge but I think it's what I'm going to have to do um, and if I can just set the camera up here for a moment um, you should be able to see that I've set the depth of the saw blade um, so that it just slide it along a bit so that it just goes through the wood okay now it's coming out the bottom here the blade is turning you know this direction okay so it's cutting the face of the wood along with the grain if i had this much deeper and it was coming out here the blade would be cutting this direction and this direction where it comes out of this surface that would rip the surface and splinter it okay so you've got to have the blade so that it's only just going through the wood uh, and then you get the cleanest surface cut basically um, rather than it ripping out of one side and back in the other. Got everything plugged in. Um, what we've got here is hoovers connected to the saw. Okay, power supply and the hoover cable. Goes into the hoover over here. Really nice setup to be honest with you. If I set this switch to two, then when I start the saw, it will also start the hoover at the same time. And that sucks up most of the dust and uh, any remnants that come out of the saw will go out of the garage door which is why I've put my workbench on that side of the garage okay so dust goes that way um, so let's give it a go see if it works
quite pleased with that. Um, this is the wood that's come off, it's sort of broken half as it was coming off. Um, but you can see, you know, horrible rough finish there. Uh, camera struggles to focus on that um, because it's too close. And then on the back here, we've got the cut surface, which is a lot smoother. Okay, have a little look at the wood itself. Okay, we've got a nice finish there, nice cut finish. And with any luck, that is a nice straight line. I'm gonna lay it on the garage floor, but just by eye, that looks pretty good. But you can see how much the top of it needs planing, can't you? Yeah, see how wobbly the top of that is? I don't really know. I mean, I'm gonna try it with a hand plane. That's get it as close as I can. That's the best I can do, to be honest. I guess that went uh, pretty well, but I'm about to lay out the planks and see how straight the edges are. Uh, I don't think they're going to be perfectly straight, but um, a lot straighter than they were, but we'll soon find out if we lay them on the floor. What I made in the end was this little piece here, um, which is the distance between the edge of my Makita saw and where the blade is. So that means uh, once I've drawn a line where I want the cut to happen, um, I can place this on, on the line and I can put a fence here, a piece of wood, take that away and I know when I run my saw down it um, that it will cut to the edge of there. So I'm going to just um, keep that in here, to be honest. Okay, so I'm going to call it a day there. We've laid those planks out on the floor and you know there, there are some gaps in places but it's way better than it was and I'm confident that when I through bolt those planks and wind them up tight uh, it should close those gaps up. Um, so I'm not gonna go to town on making those edges millimeter perfect. I can just pull them up with the with the bolts. The more tension I put in those bolts, um, the more rigid that structure, I would imagine, is gonna be. <laughs> 